I think uh, you know one of the most exciting things in 2010 from uh, I think a lot of perspectives is what's happened with the stress tolerant rices. You know, we've seen uh, sub one that will tolerate uh, complete uh, submergence, uh, sub one varieties that will tolerate complete submergence for two weeks or even three weeks, uh, really moving rapidly throughout farmers' fields in, uh, in South Asia. What is really so gratifying about all this work is, is that not only are we uh, meeting the needs of today's poorest of the poor farmers in some of these areas that were bypassed by the Green Revolution, we're also anticipating uh, meeting the challenges of climate change. Okay. Floods, droughts, seawater incursions, and all this is going to become more frequent uh, with the change in climate. And I like to call that, uh, that ability to, to meet today's problems uh, and address tomorrow's problems simultaneously as a, as a convenient convergence. And you, you remember back in the yeah. in late 80s, early 90s, when uh, you know, we first really recognized that we were going to have to jump up the, the yield potential on rice big time. And they created this new plant type. And you know, when John Sheehy first took this stuff out into the field, it was great. I mean, it had all, it had all the, the big panicles and everything, but it couldn't fill the grains. And I think that was the, the germ of the idea that if we're going to fill the grains, we have to increase the photosynthesis, and that's where the, the whole C4 thing got started. So we had a first workshop on this in 1999, where yeah. mm, experts from all over the world came together and came up with the idea, and then for many years we couldn't really get started on yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I think yeah, what happened was that it was a good idea, but everybody in that first workshop recognized that the, while the idea was good, it didn't, didn't have the tools. And I guess it was about six, seven years later, brought the same group back together again, and they said, yeah, the time's right. And, and, and one of the innovations that, that, that really pleases me is that we've, we've worked with groups that are working with uh, ex-combatant women, women who were involved in, 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 the, in the wars, or for some reason are not of, uh, eligible for the, 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 the post-combatant aid that many people are. And these women are being trained to produce high quality seed that will uh, provide them an income, a very reliable and good income. Yeah, these women are actually very interesting and I had a chance to, to meet with them very recently. And so some of them actually did carry guns during the war themselves. Uh, others uh, were just sort of supporting their mm -hmm. uh, husbands and fathers or, or sons uh, and brothers in the war. But they all have in common, as you say, that when the war was over, they needed to start a new life. You know? And there are two interventions needed. The one is on the social side. You know? So you reintegration from a social perspective. Uh, and that aspect of our work there uh, was led by CARE, as an NGO with a lot of expertise in that area. But you also need to give them a physical basis uh, to live. You know? And uh, in that case, uh, uh, that means land and, and something to grow on and some income to earn on. Yeah? So we work there in a farmer field school mode. Mm -hmm. We divide these women into small groups and each of them is given a simple task. Yeah? You as a community of women uh, are going to manage uh, a significant piece of land together to grow rice. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to learn every step in the process, uh, how to grow it. Uh, uh, we have People there are coming every week to work with each group to talk about the next step that needs to be done yeah. uh, in, in the growth cycle. Uh, we use this also to introduce or ask them to evaluate new varieties mm -hmm. with us. <coughs> so they learn uh, from scratch. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very primitive means, uh, mm -hmm. but very successful. At the end of 2010, Ark, and one of the, uh, the, the highlight achievements of, as we celebrated the, our 50th anniversary, was the creation of the Global Rice Science Partnership. Uh, we brought together uh, the main institutions around the world that have international rice research programs and actually carved out, created, one coherent global research agenda, which is, I think, the first time it's ever yes, been done for any crop yeah. anywhere. Uh, and uh, you've had a lot to do with that. And uh, I think that uh, you and your colleagues hey, but, uh, pulled off something that was people thought would be impossible. It was a lot of work, but I think it was also a fantastic experience for all of us and uh, it really represents a huge opportunity. Uh, now we've had now the opportunity to correct at least some of those. Mm -hmm. 
So we've done our part. I believe we have designed a, a very good, very exciting uh, program. So we're hoping now that we can get the full level of support from our donors, uh, the contributions from our partners. We have uh, over 900, over 900 research and development partners in the Global Rice Science Partnership. But we need to have constant support for years to come, not just for one or two or three. Right. We would like to see also strong leadership from the rice growing countries. We have the blueprint, we have the mechanism, so we have all the ingredients in place for 2011 to become the year of Christmas. I think that's, uh, I think that's uh, it's, it's something to, to keep in mind that, that as we look to 2011 and beyond, the challenges are, are still going to be there. I, we talked earlier about a, uh, a convenient convergence of, 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 of research that can address a, a wide range of, of issues. But what we're seeing in 2000 and in late 2011, when the world population reaches 7 billion people, that we're increasingly experiencing a, uh, an inconvenient divergence where population continues to increase and the amount of land available for agriculture continues to shrink. Yeah. That means we have to increase our productivity and the, the challenges that face us in, in agriculture, rice research in particular, uh, are probably greater than they were in 1960 when Erie was founded. And the, the side, but we have the tools that weren't available then. And I think that's when I look to the to the coming decade, the next 50 years. Uh, in some ways, I'm I'm daunted by the, the challenges that are facing us, but I'm encouraged by the tools that we have available. Uh, not the least of which is this this global partnership.